like we're playing cricket and we'll be sat on the balcony watching our guys batting and we'll just be talking for us all afternoon. And I said to the umpires, can you just find out the lead score for me? And it takes them about three or four minutes, so I bowl like three or four balls and they come back and go, no, it's 2-1. Uh, it's I'm like, yes. And he gave me the fine and I had to sort of sign the costings. I said, well, I'm not buying your birthday present. You'll find today's guest on the pitch, but not the one behind us here. His uh, playground is Trent Bridge, but the city ground is his home from home. He follows Forrest all over the world, from down under to the Caribbean, and apparently he's even watched Forrest in the Lord's dressing room. He's one of England's most successful bowlers and has 576 test wickets to his name. He's an Ashes winner, he's a world champion, He's now a father. He's a cricketer by trade, but a Forest fan at heart. Please welcome Stuart Broad to the official Nottingham Forest podcast on and off the pitch. Short but sweet there. Thank you very much. I mean, it's a lovely intro. Loved it. There we go. My pleasure. Uh, yeah, Forest fan globally. Everybody knows Stuart Broad, cricketer slash Forest fan. I would probably name you as that. Um, what does being a Forest fan, first and foremost, mean to you and possibly your family? Yeah, I mean, I, when you say watching Forest all over the world, actually the test match, the last test match we played in New Zealand, I think it was Mount Monganui, we were playing a day-night game, so we were starting at 2pm, finishing at 10.30, and we were playing Fulham, I think, that started at 4am, and I set my alarm and watched it. I didn't tell anyone. I didn't tell the coach or anything because uh, I'd have got in a bit of trouble of affecting my sleep during a game. But um, yeah, I, I, uh, there's something quite nice about waking up at that time in the morning, the other side of the world, but knowing that you're supporting the, the lads and trying to get a few points on the board. Surely, though, your teammates and your coaches know now that you do that. Well, they definitely do now after listening to mm. this. But they'll kind of just look at the, the results, especially those people who know you're a Forest fan and go, oh, they're playing this morning. Of course, Brody's gone and looked at the results. Uh, particularly in the Premier League, it's like, it, it's been the most emotional year. It's been the best year of my life, honestly. And that's mainly due to my daughter being born and uh, really enjoying playing cricket. But having Forest in the Premier League, honestly, like, it just... The investment in every single game and every game around us is is something different, and uh, it's a conversation in the cricket change room at all times. You know, not just about Forest, but the Premier League in general, and it's just so special to be a part of, which makes me so desperate for us to to be a part of it for a few years. Yeah, I mean, I'm a Forest fan, of course, as well. It's so special. I came actually a couple of weeks ago. I think I'm a lucky charm. Every time I come, they end up winning. That was Brighton, of course. Walking across the bridge coming into this ground like I get just like super excited like I'm coming home what kind of feelings do you get when you come and watch Forest especially here as well yeah um, it's so special coming to the city ground I think it that's built for me for me representing Nottingham as well you know playing for Nottinghamshire for a long time my dad playing for Nottinghamshire me being born in Nottingham there's just there's just something about this city that feels very special to me and and a big part of that is the city ground, you know, the River Trent and and having great memories built around this football club and that a lot of those great memories have come in the last 18 months to be honest. You know, the, the championship's an amazing experience as a fan, but th there's nothing quite like the that sort of playoff semi-final here, the playoff final and then then all the Premier League league experiences and to be honest, even if we've got away with no points I've still like loved the experience and I still love everything about um, watching Forest in the Premier League so you know the memories you build with friends around football is probably the the, the biggest thing of why you so why you fall in love with football clubs and um, there's no doubt over the last 18 months the moments I've had with friends here at Wembley uh, have, have uh, will live long in the memory. It may have changed now because I know you kind of sit in the director's box when you when you come here at the city ground. But what was it like growing up, you know, wandering here with possibly your dad or your, your sister? And uh, what did match day used to possibly look like compared to now? Was it yeah, we were uh, Brian Clough stands okay. over there, high, uh, upper tier and, and lower tier for a bit. Um, actually, my first ever game was the 8-1 Man United game, which is a... I can't believe you came <laughs> back for more. I which mean. Is a, but I, and the only reason I remember that, obviously the result was a bit unique, but the, the, the fella sat next to us um, 
was five minutes late and left five minutes before the end. So he missed. Uh, and as a kid, I, you know, you just love the action, You're don't like, you? How on earth? And why? He, but missed yeah. all the goals. Yeah. So um, <laughs> I was like constantly going to my dad. Why? Did, why would you? Li- why would you be late? Why mm. would you leave early? Why you? And since then, I've like I've never been late or or left early from a football game because um, I felt like although he missed Man United goals, he missed a lot of the action. So. Uh, yeah, I've, I've I've come to City Ground a lot with my dad, a lot with my sister. I now come with one of my best mates, Sean. Um, you know, we've got we, we sit in the eighteen sixty five a lot of the time, mm. uh, and on the odd occasion, if I get lucky into into the director's box, that's a late notice thing. You know, the Man United game. Um, so hang on, you've always got the tie in your bag just in case. Well, <laughs> the Man <laughs> United the Man United game. Honestly, it was a little bit embarrassing because. Uh, I, on the, I think it was a Friday night. I, I walked into the pub to meet Sean for a meal, and um, Nick was in there. Uh, just got chatting for a bit, and we were playing Somerset the next day. But it was a four thirty kickoff for the for the Man United game. I said everything would have to go perfectly f- if we get a win. You know, is there any, is there any possibility? Because all the tickets are, had gone, and um, he said, "Text me if you do get a win." So honestly, at like ten to four. I text him saying, the dream's alive. We've just won the game. What do you think? And do you he, feel embarrassed by the 100. way? Because I'd be like, oh, it kind of asked me, but it was in the pub, possibly uh, over a, a drink. 100% Does embarrassed. Does that sound? Shall I do it? 100% oh, gosh, embarrassed. Did, but then Man United at home, you know, you don't get, you don't get to experience that too often. And uh, all I had was exactly what I'm wearing. So I ended up, um, he said I'd be able to squeeze you in. everything, the whole I, I sat next to Steve Holland, who's the England assistant <laughs> yeah. manager, talking about football in my Knott's training kit. I was like, this is so embarrassing. But um, I, I got to got to see Man United play Forest at the, at the City Ground in the Premier League. So it was, a, it, it was brilliant in the end. But Stuart, just going back to what you said there, I feel like you're one of these people who can go and sit in a director's box in said attire just because of who you've become we were talking about this off camera and we just said you are such an icon of british sport like it or not you evolved into this guy that everybody knows doing your research on stewart it's not just forest that talk about you it's like man city want a piece of you everton want a piece of you all these clubs just because of the person you are does that ever hit home that actually you get away with going to the director's box Dressed like this. <laughs> <laughs> um, that, it was a one-off, that one. It was one-off. And hopefully it won't ever happen again because I was quite embarrassed by it. But, um, you know, it, it, playing, playing sport is such a special career and you do get to experience loads of, loads of different things. And uh, honestly, the, one of the greatest things about being in changing rooms is, is evolved around football and who, you're, who your friends support and, and the banter evolved around that. And you get to, you get to sort of... Not su- obviously you don't support other clubs, but you want your friends' clubs to do well. So with Jimmy Anderson, I, I'm desperate for you know, Burnley to get promoted to the Premier League, and now I'm hoping that we stay up because then Forest Burnley next <laughs> year will be a great experience. And um, you, you, you get to meet so many different people from from having friends at different football clubs and in and in sports. So I do feel I do feel very lucky that uh, I've been able to go to some brilliant games. Um, experience a lot of different things uh, based around being in a sports change room and based around football. Away from football and forest, what sporting event have you been lucky enough to go to, which was a bit, even for you, of a pinchy moment of, oh, wow, I've got tickets to such event. Oh, great question. And my dream is the Masters. The dream is uh, to yeah. go to... to I'm surprised to you haven't done it. Probably clashing cricket schedule. Season. Yeah. Cricket season. Haven't been able to. But um, I, I've been lucky enough to go to Wimbledon fi- the Wimbledon mm. final, which was, which was an amazing experience. Djokovic won, went with my mum. Uh, and just... Uh, I was actually amazed how close to the action it felt. Because, you know, when you watch on TV... It, it, it looks such a big stadium and, and you look like you wouldn't get to see much, but actually I, I, I felt like I could like throw the ball to them almost. So uh, that, was, that was a great experience. Um, to be honest, the, the pinch me moment I had, I was actually playing in the game. Uh, there was, it was Ben Stokes at, at Headingley, uh, 2019 Ashes game. He got 100 and whatever to win us the game. Uh, Jack Leach got, got one not out and I was in the change room, done my bit, you know, I'd, Played the sort of three and a half days, but a bit I was out, so I couldn't do anything more. So I was almost watching as a teammate, a friend, and a fan, and it really was one of those moments like, wow, like I, I'm watching this with my own eyes. This is this is like Ash's history being built right now, uh, and so that was probably the most special sporting moment I've seen um, live. 
I was playing in the game, but I was I was not part on the pitch at that time. Yeah, that's I guess what cricket is like, isn't it? You can't all be on the the pitch unless I guess you're fielding at the same time. So it is a bit of that moment you get to spectate and be a part of it. And while we're on the subject of where he'd like to go, Lee Westwood possibly Masters tickets. Maybe you've got a good connection there as a former Forest uh, fan himself, former current Forest fan. Let's talk though, Stuart. Continue about um, last season because it was pretty historic and um, just. The emotions from the beginning of the season when, you know, we got coming in, didn't really know what to expect, haven't been here for 23 years. You were a part of that kind of 30th celebration launch as well. How special was the beginning of that season and kind of going forward? Coming into the Premier League? Yeah. Uh, I mean, I think getting promoted through the playoffs was so unexpected. Mm. It, It was one of those dreams that all the way through the season... The whole city ground, could we? Could we? You know, we look good. We, we're flying. You know, Steve Cooper's come in, done brilliantly, given everyone confidence. And the closer it got, uh, you know, you start to believe it a little bit more. And then once, obviously, Wembley happened and that, 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 that experience and that win came, and then what happened in the summer with signing, you almost just wanted the season to start. And um, it, it's, it's been unbelievable. It's been, you know, we've, we've obviously, we're still on the edge. We're obviously not quite <laughs> safe yet. But the emotions of that is, is, is special. And one thing that makes me so proud to be from Nottingham is not once has this place turned, not once has it mm. really questioned um, what's going on. And actually the owners have bought into that as well by backing Steve Cooper through some periods of media pressure. They come out and say, no, he's our manager. And uh, you, you've seen a lot of other clubs when they come under pressure, the atmosphere gets a bit edgy and, and players can begin to feel quite nervous. But my belief would be a lot of the Forest players would would still turn up here, although we're at the lower end of the league, and go, I've got the full backing of this stadium and this city. And, and that's, that's what makes Nottingham so special, I think, because I know from playing over the road, if you buy into the city, if you put your heart and soul into the games, they will back you through anything. Whether you perform okay, great, badly, as long as you're, as long as you're committed to the city, you'll have the backing of the fans. And you can see that with, with the players that, that do that. There's, um, there's such a lift here. You don't, it's quite rare you get that at every club. And we've seen at the bottom of the Premier League loads of different things happening at other clubs and it just hasn't happened here. Do you almost think you're, or you act as a spokesperson for Nottingham and the sport around Nottingham? Because you're such a big defender as well of this club. If there's any negativity going around on social media, you are the man to shoot it down and, you know, really big up this club. Uh, I remember the tweet about um, Klopp saying, oh, who are Nottingham? And you're like, well, if you come down on the bus and we can go mm. off at Sherwood Forest and I can, uh, you know, show you what it is. Because like, I know Robin Hood. And it's like, you are there throughout all of those conversations as this defender, not only of kind of this team, but as Nottingham as a whole. Is that like a responsibility that you've kind of just taken upon yourself? Uh, I've not really sort of deliberately thought about that or anything. I think I just like to stick up for things that I believe in and, and that I love. And um, for me, I've learned particularly through the last 12 months of playing cricket for England how, how well we've done with the stability that's come in and the, and the freedom that Ben Stokes and Brendan McCullum have given mm. the team. Uh, I feel like I do lean very much on the side of social media of backing Steve Cooper just because he's the manager that got us out of the, the championship in 23 after 23 years, at his first attempt, there's always that question that, um, was it a year too early? Are you ever ready for the Premier League? It's a completely different style of football in the Championship, isn't it? So, you, you know, you're way better off coming up to the Premier League, seeing what it's about. So we started um, with intent by buying as many players as we did. We can say that. We had to do it yeah. because we had so many players on loan uh, and players moving on for different reasons that you, uh, you have to... We had to solidify the squad. We had to get more players in because it's such a brutal season. And we've seen with the amount of injuries we had, you know, we, we had to sign. And it drove me mad, like, on social media at times with different sports outlets saying, oh, they've signed 26 players or 25 players. It's, you're never going to have success. But we had to. Yeah, you it's had not to as it, it wasn't like It wasn't like that was just a deliberate choice and we had loads of players just in Ibiza because we didn't need them that day. You know, we needed mm. all those players and we needed a big change-up. So... Um, yeah, I'd always stick up for, for those sort of things. Klopp, did he tweet you? Did Liverpool, did you guys get tweeted back um, about him coming here and going to Sherwood Forest? 
I can't remember, to be honest. I don't, I don't think I looked. I'm, I'm not great at looking at my, my responses right. and my mentions because, uh, you know, they can get a bit tasty at times. You put it out there and then just close your ears to whatever comes out. I love Absolutely. it. Okay, that's the way you should look at social media. <laughs> um, I want to go back again to uh, the playoffs, actually, the semi-final that we had here when you brought Joe Root alongside you. Um, I think you put a picture, actually, of that on Instagram. Obviously, he's a teammate for England, former captain. Um, He's a big Sheffield fan, isn't he? How was it bringing him here to the city ground to watch that second leg where all was at stake? Uh, Nerve-wracking, to be honest. It for was you or for him? Both of us. Um, I did have a word with him. We had a, we had a beer over the road at Trent Bridge beforehand, and I said to him, look, at no stage do you celebrate here. If you're, if you're sat next to me and Sheffield United score, you do not jump up. And it started off so well for us, didn't it? What Brent, did he say? Did he agree? Uh, or, it, it was yeah. a quiet nod. It okay. was a quiet. Nod. And let's be honest, you can't control your emotions, can you? When, when in those sort of games. Yeah, but when you're but, surrounded by Forest fans, yeah, and, and everyone knows who Joe Root is. Yeah, it's. Um, <laughs> so we started off great, didn't we? Brennan scored at the back post, and uh, and then Sheffield United. I think it was straight after half time, just yeah. fired up and. Uh, he pun- he was punching me in the leg like all the time. So every time Sheffield United would be on attack, I'd be getting like constant punches in the leg. And uh, the emotion of that going to to extra time penalties was just it was outstanding. Honestly, like we we live like we we support sport, don't we? We live for the emotions in sport and how it makes us feel. And um, I actually probably felt more in the semi final win than Wembley because Wembley yeah. I was I was like so nervous. But actually, the the celebration of of winning that semi final here with the city ground erupting like it did was was something something very special. And um, yeah, we sat we sat and had a few a few glasses um, in the ground for a little bit of time. Uh, and Joe was great because he's he loves he. he I say he loves Nottingham, though, as I was going to say, but he's a Sheffield, he's Sheffield through and through. But he's got a soft spot for Forest. He's got a soft spot for Nottingham as a city. And um, I think he went to go to workshop I think and um you know he he was he, he's pretty happy that we're in the Premier League you had a secret picture as well on your phone didn't you during that game that you were going to show at no comment <laughs> only only Rooty and Jimmy Anderson I think because I sent it to Jimmy um and actually maybe our chairman Nicholas Randall might have seen it it wasn't well, explicit don't worry uh, no it's <laughs> I won't say what it is <laughs> actually that does make it sound quite dodgy I know, doesn't it's it? Joe Root in a forest shirt when he's six years old <laughs> <laughs> Moving on. Okay, so obviously we know the story. You went to Wembley. You had to ask your new coach, Brian McCullen, there if uh, you could go. And he obviously said, who on earth? Nottingham Forest. After we did the job, got the job done, did he now know? What was the vibe like when you went back, uh, knowing, like, all your teammates for England, knowing you and a Forest fan? What was that like going back? And can I set the scene, Premier first League? of all? Okay, so. On. I know Brendan a bit from playing against him, but he's just been named England head coach, so quite a big role. And I actually missed out for the Caribbean tour. I didn't go on that. So I was playing for Nottingham and hoping to get back in the England team for the start of the summer. So I get a call. Actually, I was walking through West Bridgeford down to Trent Bridge, and it was a New Zealand number. So I thought, likely that's the new coach picked up. And uh, he said, just let you know, you're in the squad. Um, You're in the squad for the Laws Test match. We're meeting... We're going to have a, a casual get together uh, on um, Sunday, the you know at seven pm or something. And I thought I'm pretty sure the playoff final starts at like four o'clock that day. So I said, I know he's quite a relaxed guy. So I said, look, um, obviously delighted to be in the squad, buzzing like I'll do anything. Um, I'm a lifelong Nottingham Forest fan, and we've made the playoff final. And he goes, uh, Who are Nottingham Forest? Do you know what the like, player final was either? So I was like, uh, <laughs> oh, they're a big football team, you know, won the European Cup. Tour. I didn't go into all the yeah, stats, yeah, yeah. but uh, <laughs> I, said, them off. I said, it's pretty much my dream to go and watch Forrest at Wembley. Uh, and he goes, of course you can. Of course you can go. Yeah, no, no problem at all. Just, um, you know, come meet the guys for a, for a bit of a social after. And uh, I actually ended up, I, um, I checked into the hotel before because we're staying in North London. And um, as I was checking in, Brendan's in reception. And I'm in my forest shirt, forest scarf. And he's like, do you want a quick cup of tea? So I was like, yeah, of course. So I'm sat with a New England head coach meeting for the first time in my forest shirt and forest scarf about to go to Wembley. And uh, all I remember when we, when we won, obviously, like it was, it was incredible. Stokesy um, just texted me saying, don't worry about tonight. Just make sure you're at training tomorrow. 
um but uh yeah so it was it was all very relaxed but uh yeah I was like the energy I had after that playoff final win like honestly the whole week was just I was I was on cloud nine for the week like training all my all my spirits were lifted so um yeah it was one of the greatest weeks of my life I think and the the boys in the team as well then when you went back to Lords after that for that for the week and and for the test what's their reaction like to you knowing you and your love for Forest. Yeah, like they, they'd be fielding and I'd be bowling and they'd be shouting, come on, Brody, you Reds, like <laughs> that, knowing that we're in the Premier League. So, they, yeah, they, they're, um, they all know that I'm a big Forest fan. And uh, there's, a few, there's a few big football fans, there's a few not so, not so big football fans, but um, they're always, you know, keeping an eye out for Forest score. And actually the, the media manager of England, we had a, a bet at the start of the year, he's a massive Leeds United fan. So we bet, uh, we've both got young kids, said whoever finishes higher in the league, uh, whoever finishes lower in the league has to buy the other one um, their home kit next season. So uh, it's a big couple of weeks for me because the thought of buying a Leeds kit is, is a bit devastating. So uh, we're, we're properly like, WhatsApping like, every minute of the day at the minute. Um, you mentioned a couple of people that, well, England players that are football fans. Obviously, we know Chris Wokes is a big Villa fan. Anyone else kind of in the team who's maybe new that's come in and that really is passionate about a certain football club? Yeah, I mean, there's quite a few. Ollie Pope's a big Arsenal fan, likes to go down there, and he's obviously his the wind out of his sails slightly um, the last couple of weeks. But uh, they come here, don't they? P- penultimate mm-hmm. game, so that's going to be a, that's going to be a, a serious uh, serious affair. Yeah, Joffre Arch is a big Man United fan, um, and always sends me a message if they beat us. Never sends me a message before, but always if they win, it's just a little you know unlucky or you know just one a one liner that just kills me. So. Um, yeah, the, I mean, obviously, Jimmy Anderson, a big Burnley fan, uh, who they've flown in the Championship this year, haven't they? I think mm. that's going to be really interesting if they can ha- keep hold of company and, and take that form into the Premier League. It'd be, it'd be quite exciting because it's such a different style to what we're used to as seeing what Burnley is, isn't, mm-hmm. it, isn't it? Without being disrespectful to them, but they've, uh, they've played a very different style. Um, so, yeah, I, I think, actually, it's, it's not like there's major rivalries in the, in the change room. There's never much, like... like giving each other stick. I think everyone almost wants each other's team to do well. Uh, and the Nottingham changing over the road, you know, it's, there's so much forest in there. I think everyone just wants forest to do well. So I must admit, like, the conversation that, uh, like, we're playing cricket and we'll be sat on the balcony watching our guys batting and we'll just be talking forest all afternoon. And um, That's a podcast uh, <laughs> in itself, guys. We'll go down there. Yeah, just, you know, just put a GoPro <laughs> in the changing room balcony and you'll see the theories that come up. You know, there's... Uh, uh, there's there's no doubt that Forrest is staying up. There's no there's no like qu- quivering in that belief. Mm. But it's just figuring out how everyone else is going down. That's uh, that's where we're at at the minute. So um, even this morning, like at training, all the talk is how good the result was, how that changes the algorithm, and how many <laughs> points we need, and where we're getting those points. But um, I don't know. Obviously, we're talking about Forrest, and that's been a lifelong kind of part of you. Um, I kind of want to yeah, there's loads I want to talk about to you but I want to mention I guess how it all started and you know obviously your dad used to bring you here as a kid you said you sat with Gemma and your dad I- in the stadium um watching but cricket in general was was it always cricket for you being from a family of cricket your sister used to work for the ECB and she was like a performance analyst your dad played for England was it something that was always a pathway for you or was there a bit of deviation of what you you may have fallen into as a youngster? Um, I always I always loved cricket. It was like a great hobby of mine. I think that's why you know I'm 36 now and I'm still playing and loving it because it is a hobby and uh, my love for it has grown from a very young age. But I've always I've always watched all sorts of different sports uh, live and on the TV. So I had that belief when I was growing up that I I'll be a or better all-round sports where I feel if I played as m- many sports as possible. You know, mm. I was just at that era where um, the professionalism was was coming into sport a lot more and sports were trying to drag you to just focus on one sport at maybe even 12 or 13. And I, even at that young age, I didn't really believe in that. I wanted to play different sports. I wanted to see what different types of change rooms were like. Mm. And um, I always knew that a team sport was for me. I, I didn't think that... I would cope well with 
with just playing an individual sport like tennis or golf because I need to bounce off the energy of, of teammates around me. And I, I like the fact that cricket particularly, you can have a bad day, get covered by a teammate, then you can have a great day and you could cover other teammates and you just, you're constantly working together to, to, to keep on a, a forward path. And I think there's so much more pressure involved in being in an individual sport where it's you every day and you have to deliver and you're the failure if you don't because... I mean, let's be honest. Like, sport is is majority failure, yeah. isn't it? And if you if you're hard on yourself and 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 focus on it in that way, it can be quite mentally tough. But um, you know, cricket's cricket's a great sport that you can have brilliant days. And even if that's one out of five in a brilliant day, you're still doing your role for the team and 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 helping the team win. So, uh, I think cricket was always a sport that was in my blood, so to speak, with my yeah. with my family. Um, but I wish I was more talented at football. Do you wish you're out there playing? I, I do, I do. <laughs> I, uh, I'm a no-nonsense centre back. Wear the number five. I can't play out from the back. I'll put it out. I'll, you know, if in doubt, put it out for throw in. But okay. I can take a really good penalty. Oh, mm. okay, interesting. Um, soccer aid, possibly in the future, or just a charity match here. I don't know. Charity e- match here. Either That's or. The dream. Either <laughs> or. Um, and I was kind of having a little thing as well because we're talking about again maybe being pushed into a certain career. Obviously, it was in your blood. But the fact that your sister is in cricket, your dad was in cricket, still in cricket, where was the escape for you growing up? Was it always just kind of cricket, cricket, cricket? When you went home, Gemma's like analysing, you weren't very good today, like you did that wrong. Do you know, you know what? The, the, the biggest thing that I thank my parents for is uh, whenever I got in the car after a game, it was never... Uh, why did you drop that catch? Why didn't you score those runs? Or why didn't you take wickets? It, the, first, the first question was always, have you had fun? Mm. Have you enjoyed it? And I think me taking that forward, even to the level that I've played at now, playing for England, if my first question is, have I enjoyed it? Then you can still enjoy days if you don't get runs. You can still have a great time with your friends if you, if you have a poor day on the field. And I've played with a lot of teammates who I feel sometimes have judged themselves personally if they don't perform on the pitch. And that can be quite, quite a stref- stressful way to play the game and actually builds a bit of fear within you. So um, I, with enjoyment being the first and number one thing, then, you know... It, that means you're there to entertain. You're there to entertain the crowd and, and you know, give people that are buying tickets a great experience at the, at the sporting mm. stadium. And uh, it frees you up. It, you know, it takes away the fear of failure because uh, if you're just looking to, to entertain, um, you, know, you, you need one moment of brilliance rather than having to do it consistently in uh, over five days. And your dad obviously was still involved in, in the game, umpiring. He was quite harsh on you at times, wasn't he? During matches, well, do you know what? There's I, one story I got, in particular. I got unlucky. I got unlucky. <laughs> okay. So because uh, he's he's the match referee from England, so he's not allowed to do England games. Because um, this is why I was confused when I was reading it. I was like, in the World Cup, if you're from England, you can't referee can't an England it. match. I was like, so he's not allowed. Yeah. But COVID arrived, <laughs> and COVID, yeah. uh, officials couldn't travel, so it meant that uh, my dad could do an England game. To which I was playing, and uh, yeah, he he fined me mm. for um, I think very harshly, and we did argue about this. Uh, so that did carry on in the car afterwards. Uh, well, so basically, I I, uh, I got hit for four, and I was a bit frustrated, and I got a wicket the next ball. So I politely reminded the batter that his way off the ground was that way, uh, with one slightly aggressive word but it didn't go out on tv and that's what you get fined for if it looks like yeah. you've been um over emotional on the tv but there was one there was one audio that could be heard in the studio in dubai that's it that could hear very very faintly what i said and my dad fined me i don't know what it was maybe 20 percent of my match fee and um i think he did it as a dad, like, you shouldn't be using that language, rather than a match official. And I said to her, we finished the meeting, honestly, I'm sat, you know, two metres away, and I'm going, I don't agree with it, this is the reason, like, th- look how many players have done this, and you've not punished them. And he gave me the fine, and I had to sort of sign the, you know, the costings. I said, well, I'm not buying your birthday present. 
I'm not buying you one. He was like, you're being such a child. <laughs> and I, uh, I wrote my birthday card uh, in September and didn't buy my birthday present. <laughs> and he didn't even get that money. That money goes to like a charity in Dubai. But, you know, I was just being petulant. I was like, I'm not buying you one. And your sister, did she agree or disagree after seeing VAR? Did she go, yeah, that was, yeah, I can on hear my side. <laughs> She's on my side. Yeah, she's on my side. But see, the broad's just kind of uh, 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 cricket enthusiast. And so I kind of wanted to know um, what the feeling is like at, at Christmas is. Well, now uh, dad is... Um, presentless but anyway mm, absolutely <laughs> um I, I yeah i wanted to ask about that i was confused about um him refereeing your match uh right i want to move on to, to kind of like forest cricket like when you're traveling when you travel to all these far-flung destinations your life is in a suitcase is there always something forest that you cannot travel without is there some like forest memorabilia you must take no because you always have a shirt in your bag <laughs> yeah, so yeah. like has he like if he doesn't take what? a shirt with him is he like oh no we're gonna lose <laughs> or he takes his mug for his coffee no. guys it was a train of thought here okay no so um not when i travel abroad but actually at uh, at, at trent bridge for your morning drink you have to bring in your own uh, mug when you first sign for the club so generally the trend is you you buy the mug that's the football team you support so in there there's everton there's man city there's Notts county and if you're Forest, you make sure you all have to have a different Forest mug. So I've got a Forest mug with um, the little emblem on, and like it's it's mainly white with tiny red stripes, a bit like the uh, the away shirt maybe like six years ago. Um, so that's probably the only like regular Forest memorabilia that I don But I always wear I always wear my my scarf on a match day unless I'm in this mm. but I always wear my scarf on a match day but no I don't take away like a pencil case or something when I go away <laughs> now you're making me look stupid <laughs> I meant, meant like like a mascot do you like no, take I meant, a like do you always take the shirt if you're going on a tour and you know Forrest can be playing do you you know maybe you want to take a picture every place you go with the Forrest shirt anyway let's just move off this topic of conversation because it's gone down <laughs> a slippery do you, slope do you though do you when you travel for work do you always take like a Forrest away shirt or something um, yeah the hat all the time Absolutely <laughs> <laughs> not um Obviously, guys, obviously I do. Um, but when you're away, obviously it's so tough to follow the team. Like you mentioned there, you know, four o'clock in the morning, kind of getting up, setting an alarm to watch the match. You know, how do you or do you try and keep up to date when you're out, especially on a test day and it's so long and you're out on the field for so long? If it's a really important match, is there a way that you've got someone in the crowd kind of going like... I, sp- I ask the umpires on the pitch because they, they're, they're, they they're all mic'd up. So I'll be bowling and over. Actually, I did it... Uh, I did it last week at Lords. We were pl- uh, playing Middlesex, and I think Leeds were playing. Uh, who would Leeds be playing last Saturday or Sunday? And I said to the umpires, "Can you just find out the Leeds score for me?" And it takes them about three or four minutes. So I bowl like three or four balls, and they come back and go, "No, it's uh, it's two one." I'm like, "Yes." Um, <laughs> Is so, that yeah. because it's you? Uh, would any of the younger players on there go? Can you go and check their Arsenal? To score be honest, I, I don't think any of the young players would be thinking about football at that time. But my mind just drifts off slightly. It helps me stay relaxed. But yeah, I just like to I like to know what the update is. And actually, we played at Lords last year for the um, first leg of the playoff semi final against Sheffield United, and we were in the field when the game was going on. But it was on the t- TV, um, and uh, we heard the roar when we scored from our changing room so we're like all the management are just watching the football game instead of watching us um so yeah there's uh it's quite hard to there was only one occasion and it was an england game when talking about football or watching it got banned in the changing room and it was the world cup i think it might have even been like 2010 england played germany you know when like lampard scored over the line but wasn't given and we were playing Australia in a one day game at Old Trafford and the coach said right I don't want any talk of football I don't want any I don't want to in the change room I don't want you checking anything and it was worse because it made you want to think about it more so I'm very much of the view of guys if you want to know what the forest score is find out the forest score but just you know deliver your skill when you got to yeah kind of relaxes you I'm sure knowing Mm. rather than being tentatively waiting for it to be told. Uh, when you're away as well, I just know especially maybe this relates to the IPL. In your India, do maybe some of like the Indian fans of you become Forest fans because they know what it means to you and they're kind of you know a massive supporter? Do you know what? I Because uh, when we travel th- with the Test matches, we get so much support and actually you know, expats from that country mm. will come and watch us. The amount of Forest flags I've seen in the last two years has been unbelievable. 
literally every ground we've played at, there's, there's some sort of forest flag, like St. George's flag with the forest badge in the middle. Uh, and I always like, and forest shirts, loads of forest shirts in the crowd. And I don't know, there's just something, um, there's like a, there's a connection, isn't there, when you see someone in a different country wearing a, f- a forest shirt? You're like, yeah. oh, yeah, that's, like, yeah I've seen I see 30,000 of them at, like, on Saturdays. But like, if I see one in New Zealand, I'm like, oh, wow, you got a forest shirt. How good's that? Like, oh, where are you from? Um, but I don't do that walking into the city ground. I don't stop everyone going, oh, where are you from? Oh, where? <laughs> but um, so, yeah, it, it, there's like a weird connection when you do see forest, the forest badge outside of, of the UK. Yeah. And actually outside of... Of Nottingham, even like when I'm in London or something, and I see a forest shirt or a forest scarf, I'm like, oh, cool, you're, you're a forest fan. Um, but I feel like we're growing, you know. I feel like we're growing around the world, and there's no doubt. Uh, I've found out this year that I think we're so many people's favourite yeah. second team. Yeah, I think like I've, maybe they're just being kind to me, but everyone I speak to is, oh, I'm so really, really want Forest to stay up. Maybe that's our history, whether it's Cluffy whether it's a lot of away, away fans coming to this ground on away, on match days and going, wow, like this is really cool. Um, but the amount of people are just saying to me, I just hope you stay up. I really want Forest in the Premier League. It's great. Yeah, it's so true as well. And it's going to make you sound like a yob, but I was on a hen party in Magaluf just after we got promoted, Farsi, uh, last year, and there was a Forest, a young Forest fan walking the beach. I was like, you reds! I'm like, where, yeah. where does that come from? Yeah, like, I know, yeah. It just brings about that <laughs> stupid emotion. Yeah, I'm like, I would never walk down the street anywhere and just no. say that. You probably wouldn't do it in Nottingham. No. But just because you're a Never on a match day. You'd, you'd, yeah. You know, walking my dad. Well, he is a bit of a yob. Sorry, dad, when it comes <laughs> to match days, but... Yeah. It's so... Yeah, it's a weird feeling. <laughs> it's so bizarre. Um, obviously, you've mentioned already, and I mentioned at the introduction, you are now a dad. Congratulations. It's been a few months, but Annabella, you have a little girl. Um, Got to ask, has she been? Is she a Forest fan? Do you make her watch? Three questions. She's there. not been to the city ground yet. Um, I waited 23 years to see Forest win in the Premier League. She waited two days. And I think we beat Crystal Palace, I think. So it was, uh, she's a Forest fan. Uh, she, she doesn't know it yet, but she's, she's worn Forest clothing. And um, yeah, I, I mean, I actually, I know this is a bit selfish on me, but I, I can't wait for the days where I can bring her to a game like, and experience the days with her. And uh, I think with my love for it, I think it's only natural that she'll have a yeah. bit of an interest in it, even if it's like, what are you watching? Um, and, you know, that generally you, generally it's like you're, you support where your parents have supported or something. And Molly's not particularly a, a huge football fan. She's got a slight lean towards Hell City because that's where her, her dad's from. Her dad's from. Um, but she's, she's, she's got a, a great lean towards Forrest as well. I was going to say, surely you're pulling her, her back this way. And obviously, yeah, her career is more creative and a musician. I'm going to say a fashionista as well. And on that point, we do have a uh, present for you. And I'm hoping, uh, Molly, you will allow um, your daughter to, <laughs> to wear this. Oh, we were looking oh, in the club that's shop. gorgeous. Look at that. <laughs> Yeah, she will. Uh, she will be wearing that, supporting Forest in the Premier League next season. I know Look they didn't. That. They didn't have a six month one, but we kind of thought she can grow into that one, Stuart. That was our plan. Oh, uh, that's so sweet. I just can't believe she's going to be that big. <laughs> but oh, that's brilliant. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. And yeah, that is that something, Molly? As yes, you know, ma- mega celeb would be happy to put your daughter in. We were going. What would Molly approve of? Yeah. Okay, well, she has to, right? Yeah, she has to. Oh. She won't have a choice. Yeah. Uh, yeah, does, is, has Molly become then the person, you mentioned um, Hull, has she become the person that will check the scores on your behalf and kind of try and really get into it and, yeah, take, take a bit of a notice because it's your team? Yeah, very, like, yeah, she really wants Forrest to do well. She's, she actually came, her, her debut to the city ground was we beat Derby 1-0. And, uh, she Best w- debut. Yeah, she thought... <laughs> Well, she was telling herself, I think I'm a lucky mascot. You know, we won, we didn't concede. Uh, and she had a moment where there was a cross coming in. She went like, overhead kick. And it was actually an overhead <laughs> kick. And so she thought that was amazing. Um, but yeah, she, she, to be honest, she does. Like, how far has gone today? Have they, uh, you know, how are they doing? And, and particularly with the evening games we've had in recent time, you know, I, we have to put a bit of her TV to the side. It's like we're watching Forest versus, versus Brighton. I can't get to the city ground, we're watching it. And um, 
it's uh, she, she sort of half enjoys it, I think. Well, she has to kind of fully enjoy it, so try and make that one yeah. change because, you know, uh, her daughter is going to be a Forest fan if Correct. she's not already. Uh, I want to ask you, obviously, you got Ashes coming up uh, in the summer, which is a big time, and you've put um, quite a, a strong statement out recently as well about the fact, that, um, about the fact that Australia possibly uh, should have not really claimed to the last Ashes because it was in COVID. I mean, the reaction to that must have... Uh, been interesting. Well, yeah, lively. Um, it was uh, when I things when I look at it and how some of it's like the headlines and written up. But when I actually read the quotes that I said, I agree with everything I said a hundred percent. So some of the way it's been written and some of the headlines look a bit like how not how I said it, but actually the quotes hundred percent agree with. So I can sit back very comfortably and go, I'm very comfortable with that. Um, <laughs> But that's a great, one of the greatest things about Ashes cricket is that sort of build-up, that lead-in. You know, my hero growing up was Glenn McGrath, and he'd always just come out and say, Australia 5-0. And it's all part of the circus, part of the drama, part of the build-up, and uh, that's part of the side of sport I love. We've always learned already that you uh, are very passionate about what you believe in on social media, and I guess it's a way also showing the new generation of young England fans of how to just stoke that fire as well when it comes to, to Ashes cricket. So I love it. I think it's you know a, a great circus. And uh, will any of the Forest boys be coming possibly to watch any of the Ashes? Do any of them text you and kind of you know ask you for a ticket or want to come and watch you? Because uh, last year there was quite a few cricket fans in the, mm. in the group. But I know Joe Lolly used to come down a lot and he's probably enjoying his time in Sydney watching a bit over there. Uh, he did actually send me a few pictures in the winter with like Brian Lara and watching cricket at the SCG. So I think he's enjoying his time. Uh, I think Wazza comes down to Trent Bridge quite a bit. Um, but the Ashes comes at sort of that, you know, bit of a holiday time for the, for the football guys and then back into pre-season. But um, yeah, if, anyone, if I'm playing and anyone wants to come... Always welcome. Do you have that relationship? We only get four tickets, so not, oh, all, not all at once. <laughs> and my family need to use them as well. But always welcome if there's spare tickets on that day. Possibly not. I'll ask <laughs> for a friend of a friend. Um, but have you got that relationship with any of the Forest guys? I know, you know you've been around when you've had the Michael Dawsons, the, the Reedies. Um, yeah, a lot of different players in your time. Maybe Henry Lansbury. They've all kind of come and go of any of the current squad that you know you do have that relationship with and you try and get a bit of an insider into what's happening here on, on a match day not really not um you know there's obviously been quite a big turnover of players in the in the last couple of years um but uh you know I've got a, a big soft spot for for Brennan you know I know I know John O's dad really well and and spent loads of time with him and love him to bits so it's uh, I, every time Brennan steps on the field I, I'm desperate for him to do well and he actually uh, John O made me feel quite old um, I think it was last year sent me a picture of a bat I'd gave to Brennan when I was playing for England and Brennan was like six <laughs> I was like oh my god like that makes me feel so old um, but uh, yeah you know I, I, I don't know he's he's a Nottingham boy he's he's, he's a guy that's come through our system um, and shining for our club in, in on the on the biggest stage. So he's someone that every time he steps on the field, I'm I'm desperate to to see him do well. And um, and well, obviously there's quite a few of those. But I've had some, you know, watching this year. There's a few players that have really stood out for me. And uh, Gibbs White's one. He's like one of my favourite players I've seen at the City Ground. Just he's obviously got amazing skill, but for me, it's his like hunger and drive and energy that he puts into the game and. You know, for me, I, I don't really judge like performances because they can, they can waver. But I always judge commitment, energy, passion mm. because that's sort of it's sort of non-negotiable. It's you can always do that. And actually, if you put a pass, if you miss a shot, or you put a pass in the wrong direction. That that's fine if you're showing the other things. And he's someone, and and Felipe, you know, these sort of guys that just seem to lead that energy. Um, and we're going to need them in the next few weeks, aren't we? Yeah, it's a it's a, a big. A big moment at the moment for the city ground and, and what's happening as we approach the end, obviously, of their first Premier League season back for 23 years. So, Stuart Broad, thank you so much for chatting to us today. Of course, we do have the leaderboard still to be decided in the corner. We have some very pressing questions for you to answer. Right. So it's out of six. 
Five I will ask you, one you have to listen to. Okay. Okay, and then guess the player. Um, and we change the, the voice so it's not him. Yeah, kind of makes sense. Him or her. Okay, yeah, that's a f- fair. So, um, who's at the top? So yeah, you see. Okay, so... Stuart Broad, it's time for the leaderboard. These are questions kind of about Forest, you in general. Okay. Okay. Six questions coming your way. Number one, who has the most appearances for Nottingham Forest? Ever. Yeah, ever. I thought, the reason I put this one in, I thought Stuart might be the kind of person that goes and looks online at Nottingham Forest records, and maybe they're like <laughs> in green. Do I give that impression? <laughs> I hoped he would be the means he's going to get this answer wrong. I've got Sky Sports, that's why I do. Think really old school, really old school. Um, most appearances ever. I it's going to have to be, I would say it was going to have to be a defender or a goalkeeper to play that amount. Well, it's, do you mean to give me how many it is? 692. On, I was like, that's just ridiculous. 692. <laughs> Is it up there? No. no, no. I was just seeing there might be like a little corner or stand. Um, 692, mm. so that's borderline. That's a lot. That's a one club player, really. Like no. Um, in the 50s and 60s. Oh. <laughs> Give me some facts. When I was minus 30. Yeah, well, you know, I, I thought you might have looked at the record books. <laughs> 50s or 60s. Okay, so um, I just... You've, you've got this I've one got wrong. no chance. Bob McKinley. Woo! Centre-back. <laughs> well, h- half a point for saying centre-back or goalkeeper. Um, adjudicators? <laughs> no? No. No, I, right, I don't think I'd have got that. Question two. You sh- I, I heard you mention him already. Who wears the number 38 for Forrest? I tried to go with yours, eight. Number 38. 38, Felipe. Yeah, one. <laughs> number three. When did Stuart Pearce become manager of Nottingham Forest for the second time? What year? Oh, it's one of the best videos ever, isn't it? Yeah. Walking out. And I was thinking, um, you're going to picture where you were at this moment. Yeah, uh, and it's when Osborne scored at Derby, wasn't it, in the last minute? <laughs> I think his time goes so yeah. quick, doesn't it? So I thought this was really recent. Is it? Is it? Um, it's around 16, 17, I want to say. Um... Adidas shirts. 16. 14. 14? 14. I was so shocked as well. I was like... It's nearly 10 years ago. How long ago? Yeah. July 2014. Wow. Crazy. Until when? Was he here for about 18 months? So maybe 16, but you're not going to go that... To be fair, we've had a decent turnover in that That, time, haven't we? Yeah. I literally thought it was like four years ago. Yeah, 16 felt right. So, wow. four, so that's one out of three. Right. One and a half out of three. Oh, this, okay. is, this is tough. Sorry. Oh, great. <laughs> so I'm, I'm going to end up at the bottom here. <laughs> I thought these were quite easy. Okay. Um, you have the second most test wickets mm-hmm. behind Jimmy Anderson. Mm-hmm. You For England. Even, yeah. How many does um, Jimmy have? You didn't even know how many you had. You have 576, remember? I said that in my introduction. <laughs> How about we negotiate that I need to be within the, the closest 10? Okay. Um, it's 686. Oh my gosh, 685! Is it really? Yeah. 685. So we'll give you that one. Oh my gosh, I had, that was great. Well done, two out of four. Okay, question five. In what seasons did Forrest get back-to-back playoff semi-finals but fail to make the playoff final? That successful Shh. was that um, Swan uh, was that not uh, Swansea um, Yo, um, it was Swansea, Swansea Sheffield then, United uh, yeah. Swansea Blackpool, Blackpool yeah was the first they year. had a red Swansea's, card here yeah. early first sort of ten minutes Blackpool and then Swansea those I was years watching I was watching that in yeah. Brighton playing against Sussex I want to say two thousand am I naming two years here so yeah so give me like ten eleven so that's that's one year. One. So it's was either side. Blackpool was... You've got 50-50 chance. Oh, was Blackpool before that or after that? Mm. You're going to get this one. Swansea was the... Se- I reckon Swansea was the second of the frustrations. So the year before. 
Yes, correct. Yeah. 2009, 10, 9, 10, 10, 11. So that's when uh, Robbie Earnshaw scored a hat trick against Derby yeah. here in that time, yeah, wasn't yeah. it? Mm. Correct. Woo. So that is three and out a half. Of <laughs> no, yeah, three, three, three and a half. Okay, then you can listen to your headphones and tell me which player this is. The support and the fans. I just want to thank every single one of them. They've, they've been excellent. You can play it again if you'd like. Have you changed the voice? I just want to thank every single one of them. They've, they've been excellent. Well, the support and the fans. I just want to thank every single one of them. They've, they've been excellent. Well, it's either it's either Yatesy or Wazza, isn't it? Can I hear that one more time? The support and the fans. I just want to thank every single one of them. They've, they've been excellent. I'm going to say it's the skipper. Woohoo! Joe Worrell. So are we giving Stuart Broad four or four and a half? I'll take four. I'm happy with that. Stuart We're Broad, off the bottom. four and a half we're giving you. Oh, four and a half. Happy with that. Let me just write this in. Now I've played the game, I go. can see why there's so many crossing outs on the leaderboard. <laughs> Because I can't count, basically. <laughs> no, but they, they actually all cheat. Sorry, guys. Uh, cheetah was um, Michael Dawson. Cheetah was Robbie Earnshaw uh, last time. Um, yeah, we've got a lot of cheaters. Sorry, it's taken me a long while. Uh, let me try and push it. What was that cheating? Yeah, you were right Four. there. Four. Oh, woo. Four and a half. Oh. I'm happy with that. Stuart Broad, thank you so much for coming on On and Off the Pitch. I hope your little girl enjoys... The baby grow, and we can't wait to see her at the city ground in the future. You and Molly as well, and uh, let's hope for Premier League next season for sure. Good. good luck at the Ashes as well. Thank, Thank you. you so much for joining us. Well, guys, if you enjoyed that, you know what to do. Go and subscribe on YouTube and then hit the subscribe wherever you listen to all your podcasts as well. And we'll see you next time.